Scratch is one of those edtech tools a lot of others aspire to be. It's grounded in constructionist pedagogy, supported by years of research at MIT, and has a thriving community of creative kids learning to code and communicate. Scratch is free, it's available on the web, although you'll need Flash, there are no official apps, and it is really suitable for all grades according to the Scratch team, although for younger kids they have an app called Scratch Junior that may fit better. For older kids, I get the sense that this isn't gonna be a perfect fit, um, and you may wanna look at other tools that fit high school students' sensibilities a bit better. Here we are on the Scratch homepage, and there are three main sections. Create, where you create your projects. Explore, where you find other people's projects. And tips, where you get advice as to how to create. Let's dig into the Create section, because this is really the heart and soul of Scratch. And what you have here is this section is what your project looks like. Here's where you load in sprites, which are the characters, or backdrops, which are the things that appear behind the characters. And then over here, we have a library of scripts. Those are the bits of code, the visual blocks that students um, stick together to make sprites do things. There are also costumes, you can change the look of your sprites, and then sounds that you can insert. And all of this can really create some spectacular projects. Let me show you kind of how it works here. So we have our sprite, and we're gonna make him do something. We slide over this when clicked block, and then let's add a little hello block and stick it on there. So when we click on this, this character will say hello. Now you can also go in here select a different backdrop, and you can also add new sprites to the scene. And then an important thing also to realize is that for both of the sprites and the back um, backdrops, you can select from a library. You can actually draw your own using this tool that's built into Scratch. You can upload you know, if, you're, if, if your students are already using um, an art program, they can just upload it from that program. And then you can also take pictures using the device, device's camera and upload those pictures in. So clearly there's a lot of creative control kids can have. And while they're playing around, an important thing not to miss is over here in the corner is this little question mark that opens up the tips menu. And this gives kids a lot of options for learning a bit more about how to get started. There's a step-by-step -step section which takes kids through some interesting projects. There's a how-to which breaks things down by some common things kids may want to do and how they can do it. And then the blocks section just explains what all of these different blocks are. This section, however, is a bit technical for my tastes. You can also show kids that on the homepage, they can go to the tips section itself. And here is a lot of those step-by-step -step tutorials. There are also these cards that you may want to print out and hand to kids. This is a downloadable PDF, and you can print these out, cut them out, and hand them to kids in their little instruction books. There are also some starter projects here that give kids a, more than a blank canvas. You know, something already prepped that they can then um, play around with and add to. There are also these studios, and this is one of the coolest aspects of Scratch, where students get together, um, students or kids, I should say, get together, and they will curate um, sets of thematically aligned projects. And this really, sh really showcases both the creative potential of Scratch, but also the community aspect. What kids can do is, view any of these projects, and then they can see inside them by clicking that see inside but button, and then they can see how things were made. They can see how someone put together a set of blocks to make a project work and happen. Now, here is the kicker. Not only can they learn by seeing what other kids are doing, but then they can click the remix button and then they get a copy of this project that they then can fiddle around with and save and share themselves. 
And in each of these projects, you'll see that there's actually a vibrant community of kids contributing their thoughts and feedback. And this is well moderated and organized and um, the Scratch site actually has a great set of community guidelines as well as discussion forums where kids can learn to be responsible digital citizens and contributors. So if you're a teacher and you're interested in using Scratch in your classroom, I would advise you to check out the For Educators section at the bottom of the Scratch homepage. This will allow you to sign up for a teacher account. It only takes about a, bit, about a day. You have to request the account and then they get back to you. But what the teacher account allows you to do is you can add your students, curate their projects, and monitor their comments. The other thing I would say you should take a look at is this Creative Computing Curriculum Guide here, linked from the Educator section. You can download it right there, it's this PDF. This was developed by the Harvard Graduate School of Education and is honestly one of the best implementation guides I've seen for an ed tech product. That being said, it's a lot. It's 154 pages, but it gives you everything you need to know about really taking a full dive into the creative computing process in your classroom. There is a community of educators called Scratch Ed that you can check out and here you can discuss with other, other educators. They'll field your questions or you can share what you've been doing. It's active just like the kid community forums on Scratch are. There are stories from other educators about how they're using Scratch in their classroom. And then there are also a tremendous amount of resources across really all grades and subjects, although there's a very particular strength here in middle school and elementary school. Uh, you know, you, you can find lesson plans here, handouts, presentations, all kinds of things, really. Now, this is going to feel like a lot to take on, honestly. <laughs> However, digging into this and, you know, you know, reviewing the creative computing curriculum guide, maybe over a summer and learning how to implement Scratch is going to be something that you spend a lot of time doing, but has a huge upside in terms of a tool that you can use just about any day in your classroom and over your full career as an educator. So that's an introduction to Scratch, but if you're interested in a more in-depth analysis as well as a learning rating of Scratch, check out our review on Common Sense Education. Feel free to also let me know about your take on Scratch in the comments.